I live in a modest house with my mom, her boyfriend, and my brother. I'm the only one in the family who truly believes in ghosts. We have two cats and a dog, a variety of animals in my room, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The house doesn't have much history and has only had three families live in it before us. Back in September, mom noticed one of our cats, Wilbur, would always stand in front of and pull open the closets in our laundry room. He had a large machine of some sort that helped power the house. Very small, not any places to hide that might entice a cat to explore it. The next day, after she pointed this out, I walked past the closet to get to the garage and goosebumps grew all over my body. I'll admit that this could have contributed to my slight paranoia about it, but it felt more severe than other times I've gotten chills over something scary. Things progressed over the next few weeks. I went outside through the front door one morning. Everyone was either gone at work or asleep to clean something from my animals. And when I went to open the door again, it was locked. It's the kind of lock that you twist to the side, like a control for a stow stop. And it requires a bit of force to turn. When my mom came to answer the door after 10 minutes, she said her ring alarm never went off and the doorbell only rang once, even though I pressed it multiple times. In my room are two art pieces that my grandma made and let me keep after she passed. They're made of planks of wood and crushed soda cans and curly hair, made out of what I can only assume is very thin metal. Sometimes, when the boyfriend is drilling holes in the wall, the hair on one of the people trembles, though it can't be heard over the sound of the drill. However, in the middle of the day, one strand of hair started shaking much harder than other times and wouldn't stop for a good hour, despite there being no drilling going on. After those weeks of weird things happening, it came to a climax. Wilbert was almost screaming at the closet door and pulled it open constantly, even after we closed it. None of the pets in my room came out to get treats, which they get each day at about the same time. They only came out to get sips of water, and when I saw them, they looked sluggish. My phone also went to shit. My keyboard would randomly start lagging. The charger I'd been using for only a month gave out on me. And at one point, the phone restarted itself without being manually turned off. I still have a lot of issues with it to this day. I'm getting overheated quickly to having to do a total restart at least once a week to keep things running. Or usually, reliable Wi-Fi has also been very poor since that day. So yeah, maybe there's something there. Where I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but all this just seems very suspicious. My mum and dad are typical boomers, who were hoarders of old vintage collectibles, toys, books, and in particular, music records. This one time in our attic, we decided we were going to clear out a lot of the old, dusty, moth-eaten records to make some space in the attic and donate them to the charity shop. It was during that time that my older brother and I came across a cardboard box. In it was our dad's old Sony Walkman, if you've ever seen Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, you know the main hero, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, carries a Walkman that he listens to all the time when he's fighting the bad guys. Well, it turns out that model Walkman is the very same one my dad owned, the Sony Walkman TPS L2. And it was right there, in a box in our dad's attic. It was even the same colour as well. The funny thing is, my dad thought this was broken since only one of the earphones was working. And thus, he kept it tucked away in a box and hadn't used it in decades. But we soon found out that all we had to do was replace the headphones with our own ones. Something which had never occurred to him and, hey presto, we got it working again, good as new. A lot of the tapes we found were in good typical 70s and 80s rock bands. The Eagles, Iron Maiden, Aerosmith, Pretenders and Rush. We were actually blown away by the sound quality of the old 70s Walkman. These things were definitely high fidelity and exceptional to listen to, even now. By this point, we were both completely distracted with our original task of clearing out the attic. The coolest thing about it was, you could connect two headphones into it so two people could listen at the same time, making it far more sociable listening experience than those smartphones we all have now. But even more awesome was 
we found out there was this little thing called a hotline button, where if you pressed it, you could actually speak to the other person over the sound of the music, via the microphone that was inside the device. When we found that out, we just kept laughing, all the while using it to communicate over the songs. It was amazing to us that they even thought of including a feature like that in it. It just seems like such a cool gadget to have for such an old toy. They certainly didn't make this stuff like this anymore. While we were goofing around, we eventually saw that there were six blank TDK cassette tape boxes, most of which were unmarked. When we examined out of curiosity, the ones that were, however, had black marker pen writing on them. Now, since the original Walkman did not have a record feature, nor could it connect to the radio, these tips must have either been made on another device or given to him by someone else. The first three unmarked tapes were literally just blank empty tapes with nothing on them. The fourth one, dated January 5th, 1981, was a recording of the Super Bowl match between the Raiders and the Eagles. The next one was a short excerpt of a recording from KS Radio dated June 5th, 1983. Nothing much on it. Just some random news segments. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. And then there was the sixth tape. It was cryptically named MS. It had no date on it. Not knowing what to expect and feeling too bored out of our minds and curious to put it down, we just unthinkingly put it in the device and listened to it. At first, the tape was silent, although there was a noticeable background hum. Like a lot of vintage tapes. It sounded like it must have high DC bias. We thought at first this was another blank tape, but then we started to hear a person breathing heavily. Then, after a short while, a song came on. We scoffed it was pretty standard for Caesars, especially those that experimented in avant-garde, to include ambience and strange noises to add atmosphere to their songs. The song we heard was strange. It sounded off-key and tuneless. It almost sounded like a song and at the same time, it wasn't. It was so weird to listen to. We literally just stood there and weren't sure what to do. We didn't know exactly what it was that we were discovered. We began to feel strangely unsettled and yet, for reasons I don't understand, we chose to ignore our instincts and instead kept on listening to it. Have you ever heard a song that you feel like you've already heard before, but you aren't sure where from? Like in a dream from very long ago as a child? Because that's where the feeling I got when I listened to it. I got up strange feelings and obscure memories in me I didn't even know were real or not. Unfortunately, while we remember most of the details of what went on that day, I just cannot describe the song in any meaningful detail at all. I can't replicate its melody on a piano or a guitar or even sing it. It's like shrouding this cat. In a way, it's there, in my head, and yet, it isn't. The only thing I can recall with certainty is that I felt very strange sensations upon hearing it, ones that made me distinctly uncomfortable. We were both so mesmerised by what we were hearing that we didn't even use the hotline button to communicate it. We just stood there in eerie silence the entire time. Another thing I can recall about the song, it was long. Monotonous too. I can't remember how long, but to us, it felt like it might have been 20 minutes to 20 minutes, or even half an hour. We didn't have to clock or wristwatch on, so we have no reliable evidence. And besides, it's not like we're counting. Then, at some point, possibly due to pure coincidence, we swear we have no idea how this happened, but the power and the lights had suddenly gone out. We were alone, listening to this freaky psychedelic tune in the dark, but we were so engaged in what we were listening to, we didn't even notice. There was only one line I think I remember hearing from the song, and it's pretty messed up now that I look back on it. I don't know if I remember it correctly, but I think it went something like this. I can hear the voice of God. He says, it's time. Time for what? What kind of song was this? It was just that we had stumbled upon some freaky, cultish, psychedelic program in our dad's tape collection. I had no idea what it was, but what I did know is that my skin had gone completely cold and white. 
for reasons I couldn't describe, and which just would not make any sense to me at the time. It felt like something truly awful was happening. I got this really disturbing and unnatural feeling, like we have found something we were definitely not meant to. And then, eventually, my brother and I were caught off guard by the loudest, most horrifying, most agonising, torturous, fucking loud screeching we had ever heard. It was just so sudden, so out there, and so painful to listen to. We panicked and dropped the Walkman on the ground, breaking both the Walkman and the tape inside with it. Suddenly, the lights were now back on, and soon after that, our mom came in, asking us what the hell had happened. She was angry that we had spent around 30 minutes listening to music, and not helping her with sorting some of the old stuff. And when she saw the broken Walkman on the floor, she was even more furious. We just smashed one of our dad's favourite childhood toys. In the days since then, I asked dad exactly what kind of tape it was that we heard. He said he had no idea. He remembered that the recorded tapes were given to him by a friend, but he had no idea what that MS tape was, much less what the initials stood for. He'd certainly never listened to it and was completely surprised when we told him our story, because he still cannot remember how or where he even got the tape. With nothing more to even go on, and since the cassette and Walkman were both broken in any case, we had no choice but to get rid of both the Walkman and the broken taps. We also handed the remaining ones to the charity shop. Now I would normally chalk the story up to being nothing more than two young idiots goofing around and hearing an old, weird tape with dark, surreal, edgy music. But some very strange things started happening to me after that. First of all, the song in question. Now and then over the past few months, I swear I've been hearing parts of it over and over again in my dreams. Some of the dreams ranged from peaceful and calming to frightening and absurd. It feels like there's some ghostly spectre chasing after me. I've never listened to any song that has given me this kind of profound psychedelic experience. And what is so frustrating at the moment is that I just cannot describe it, sing it, or try to hum it to any of you here. I can't even replicate it on MIDI software or music notation. All I remember is that one line. Even now, I'm amazed that even after hearing a song that left such a vivid, forceful impression on me, I still can't remember anything about it. I've typed the lyrics on Google and so far found absolutely nothing. It's like my memory of the song has been completely erased. Also, my brother for some reason never talks about it. When I reminded him about the tape, that one that we listened to, he kept asking me if I was okay and that he swears I was exaggerating or he simply doesn't remember it. If the incident rattled him anything like it did with me, then he's not showing it. And that's not all either. Recently, he's changed. I swear, he's become different. He no longer talks to me. In fact, he no longer talks to any of us. A lot of the time, he just seems like he's some place else mentally. If you've ever looked into the eyes of someone during a schizophrenic episode, you notice how their pupils dilate and they look like they're phasing out of reality. I swear, I've noticed this happening to him. I do not want to sound like I'm being ridiculous, suggesting that a haunted tape did this to him, but he certainly was not like this before that day. On the outside, everything seems to be alright with him. He's still walking in the dog, he still drives off to work, he still helps cook dinner with the rest of us. But most of the time, he just seems vacant and distant, like he's not actually there. I don't know what's going through his head, or what has happened to him. I've lived in Alaska my whole life. Half of my life has been in my secluded village, and the other half has been in the city. I ask this question because I want to know what more there is. Most of my hauntings have been in my village. The most recent ghost sighting I've had is when I was working at a maid for a hotel near the mall on the south side of Anchorage. While I was looking for the girl who was training me, I walked into the main room where the beds were. I turned back and started walking to the door to leave when I saw somebody, a whole person, walk past the bathroom door. 
I immediately stopped and thought maybe she just came in and started in the bathroom. I peered in the bathroom and didn't see her. I looked in the shower and nobody was in there. Leaving would have been impossible since there was only the door which I was blocking and the tub windows that opened out. They were closed. I got spooked and left immediately since my fellow housekeepers told me that there was a spirit of a man who watched the maid clean and if he didn't like you, he would attack. He usually stays on the third floor and I was working on the first at this time. I'm not 100% sure it was him, but I didn't want to find out. Anyway, the only other stories I have are very short and in my childhood. Due to traumatic instances I've experienced, I cannot remember most of my childhood, just bits and pieces. But I do remember seeing a huge metal thing hovering up in the night sky. It had propellers like a helicopter, and I would have thought that it was a helicopter if it hadn't been for the fact that it was storming like hell that night. I'm talking about 40 to 50 foot waves crashing on the bank side. Wind and rain that soaked my hoodie within minutes. I'm not sure what it was, but my friend and I were standing on the bank looking at the inlets for the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, I know. When this thing showed up and hovered above up, it was close enough we couldn't see the whole thing, but far away that we couldn't touch it. Anyway, we both screamed and ran back to the boys and girls club, where we told an adult and he said it was a weather balloon. All I remember was that it was made of steel and it was hovering. Never saw it again after that. My brother and I decided to sleep in our older brother's room, which he kept pitch black. Could not see at all. No light. We slept in there watching a movie and the TV turned off by itself after not being in use for a while. I woke up feeling my brother get up and walk out of the bedroom to the bathroom where I saw the light turn on and dim as he closed the door. My feet were blazing hot. So I did what you're never supposed to do. I hung them off the end of the bed. As we were cooling, I thought that there's no such thing as boogeymen or whatever and laid there staring at nothing. I was waiting for my brother to come back so I could sleep in peace. I felt a hand, I swear on my dog's grave. A hand with fingernails, fingernails. Scratch the sole of my foot very quickly. I had hidden under the covers and started begging God or whoever to make it go away. I waited maybe 30 more seconds before I poked my head out and then heard the toilet flush and the door finally open. I never told my brother since he was at the side of the bed, knowingly protecting me from that thing. I was up against the wall and kept my limbs inside the blankets all night. Per usual, I brought up the topic of ghosts. All the adults around the campfire retold their own experiences, but my dad kept the story to himself. You'll get chicken poop, he would say when we begged him to tell the story. In the end, he told us. The story takes place in the old days when there was no electricity in our village and everyone lived in shacks deep in isolation. At the bottom of a large hill, there were a few houses and a sandy beach that ran for miles in either direction. My dad was just a child then. The sun was setting and lanterns lit the houses. The kids were laughing and yelling so loud, the adults told them to quiet down. My dad and the rest of the kids continued yelling and laughing when they heard it. A blood-curdling scream from over the hill. The kids went silent immediately and stood there frozen. They listened for a moment, when the trees on the hill started moving as though something big was coming their way. The kids ran inside, their faces full of fright. When the adults asked them what was wrong, they didn't say anything. The adults didn't hear anything except for the kids playing. My dad said, there's an old burial plot at the top of the hill. None of us got any sleep that night. I come from a small fishing village in Alaska. Our residents never surpassed 400 people living in the village at a time. Back in the 30s, the village was relocated due to constant flooding. In our new village, we have homes, a school, two tribal offices, a boys and girls club, a post office, a church, and a graveyard. 
The graveyard sits atop a big hill, down by the beach, away from the rest of the village. Recently, we had to expand the graveyard because we were running out of plots. This is relevant to what I'm going to say. My village is haunted. Not just one or two houses or the school, the whole village. The spirits wander and have been seen walking up and down the roads, going into buildings or homes. Per every small town, everyone has a story. Some hear babies crying in the woods, hear their dead relatives calling to them, see dead relatives walk past them and disappear, just as they catch up to them. Like everyone else in my village, I've had a couple encounters that will stay with me. What I can't understand, however, is why they're wandering the earth. I had a couple theories, and I thought I would post here for some feedback. Theory 1. After being forced to adopt Russian Orthodox Christianity during the Russian colonisation, I don't think my ancestors are pleased about the whole being buried for all eternity bits. Maybe we're not supposed to be buried. Theory 2. They have unresolved issues or don't know they're dead. They seem to be going on about their day, not attempting to reach out or see us. Theory 3. My village is cursed. My grandma tells me of her mom's uncle, who was a shaman. She said he tried to curse the man, but my grandma's brother got in the way. My grandma's brother drowned at 12 years old. The shaman was so upset he cursed the man's entire village to always be thirsty. My grandma said her friend from that village always chews on ice, which makes her question that curse to this day. I wonder if that curse ended up cursing my whole village for decades to come. I talk about the curses because recently... We've had two to four deaths a year for a few years now. I grew up in a large farmhouse in Indiana. The house had 200 plus acres of farmland and had been passed down through the family since its original settlement of the area by my pioneer ancestors. Things would happen here and there but everything hit the fan when my family hit hard times and we were forced to sell the house the majority of the property. In the last three months before moving out, the activity became so bad that it's making me cry writing this. First, it started with growling. If you sat at the dining table in a chair facing the entryway, you could hear distinct growling like a dog. My sister first noticed it sitting at the table with me doing homework. I could only hear it if you sat in that chair. Not stand, not next to, had to be in that chair. My sister looked up at me and started scolding me saying I didn't let the dogs out. I told her I didn't hear it and the dogs were outside. I had to get up and open the basement doors and entryway door to prove to her the dogs were outside. She talked about all the time that she could hear it. Then she stopped sitting in the chair. Me being the little opportunist, decided once to sit in her chair at the table alone. Ten seconds, and I could hear the growling. Low, mean, animalistic growling, and the feeling of someone watching from the entryway where the sound was. Then, lights and TVs would turn on by themselves. Things moving from where you left them, and general awful feelings. One day after school, I took leftover meat out to the dogs. My personal dog was a Pomeranian. Small, cute, and not a mean bone in her. She was very submissive and always wanting to play and cuddle. I saw her laying on her stomach, seeming to be sleeping. She was facing a fence. I went up to her and knew when she didn't respond to her name, something was wrong. I went to pick her up and couldn't. She didn't budge because one of the fence stakes was skewered through her mouth deep into the ground, so she was pinned. It wasn't through her head. It was as if someone got her mouth open, pulled the stake out and speared her through her tongue and bottom jaw into the ground. I swear this is true. We didn't have neighbours, and I don't know anyone sick enough to spear a five pound friendly dog into the ground. The pen was also in our backyard, right up next to the house. I screamed and was hysterical to the point that my sister called my mom, who was working and sent my grandma over to the house to see and comfort me and she was in complete shock. 
Words can't describe the hurt this caused me to lose my dog this way for seemingly no reason. Things continued and we started only staying at the house a few days a week. My older sister was there alone sometimes to care for the pets while we went with my mom to another state where she was working. My sister would call my mom losing her mind because of doors and cabinets either all being open by the time she got home from school. Police didn't know what to do or think because there were no signs of a break-in. Plus at this point, we knew it wasn't anything normal. On the second to last night at the house, my mom had me go around and make sure all the lights are off before bed. Again, the house was pretty big and we had been packing and cleaning all day. There was a small TV in the bathroom off the dining room. I found it turned onto TV fuzz, but no lights on. I flicked on the light, walked over and returned to the TV. Got to the do- doorway and it was back on. Fucking ran up to my mom And grandma, who didn't want to hear it anymore, and insisted I go back and make it stay off. My grandma came out with me this time, and sure enough, it did it again as soon as we turned to walk out as it was on again. Grandma told whatever was there to stop in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the TV obeyed this time and stayed off. The last night in the house was when we all experienced the raw power of whatever was mad at us. Things felt weird going up to bed. I think about 10 to 15 minutes went by, and I could not sleep. I could feel something was about to happen. Suddenly, all the kitchen cabinets downstairs went nuts, banging open and closed. My older sister came into my room and was like, see, come sleep in my room. And we ran back to her room, the cabinet still going. She was sitting in a chair in the kitchen and looked up at us like we were interrupting her. She was talking to whatever was there. She believed our angry family telling them why we had to leave and scolding them for making things so hard for us. I didn't think my mom even believed in ghosts until then. I was in awe of her strength to face them, like they were not fucking ghosts, entities or demons or what have you. We left scarred and still talk about us together, but it's hard. We can't forget, but I don't know if we would want to. I've been obsessed with ghosts and the afterlife since leaving. Mostly to just validate it to myself that we're not having some crazy family hysteria episode. So when I was about three or four, I had this imaginary friend named Alice, and I used to play with her 24-7. I used to take up biscuits for her, my mum had to make a plate of food for her whenever we were eating, We were just best friends, and my parents thought nothing of it. They just thought that it was normal, because it is normal for children to get imaginary friends at some point. But some weird things started to happen. The first thing my mother told me is that one day, she left a baby monitor upstairs. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. And it started to pick up white noise, as if something was trying to communicate. You would have thought that maybe it would have been connected with other baby monitors in the area, But she told me that our neighbours had no babies, so there would be no need to have a baby monitor on. It was probably just a minor glitch in the baby monitor, so no big deal, but it's slightly weird. Another thing that used to happen is that whenever I would be downstairs or at school, and my parents would just be chilling upstairs, they would hear footsteps upstairs, and it would either sound like somebody was playing in my room when I wasn't in there, or walking down the hallway, and obviously... They would go up to check and there would be nobody there. They were just basic things. Nothing too drastic and you could put them down as normal things. The next thing I'm about to tell you is quite creepy. One night, my mother was putting me down to bed and she tucks me in. And she was about to leave the room. But as she was about to leave the room, I said, Night. Insert my mother's name. And it genuinely freaked her out. When she asked me about it, I went on to say, that wasn't me, that was Alice. So I'm not sure what went on there, and if I thought that it was a joke back then, but, you know. Another thing I should mention is that I was a very bad sleeper, and also a very badly behaved child whilst living in that house. So I used to almost sleep in my parents' bed every night, or have my mother stay with me until I fell asleep, and I was just a different kid, according to my parents. 
We left the house when I was about seven or eight. I can't fully remember. And before leaving, my parents used to joke like, ha, don't forget to pack Alice. But when we left the house, I never spoke about Alice ever again. I also behaved better and slept better too. It was as if I was a different child. My mum once asked me about Alice and she said stuff like, oh, where's Alice? Don't you play with her anymore? Have you got a new friend? And apparently I looked at her blankly and said, what do you mean? Alice doesn't live with us. Alice lives back at the old house. I think it's strange. Another thing I do want to quickly mention is that I don't remember anything about this. I don't remember anything about Alice at all. I remember the house so well. I remember everything about that house and I have memories about the house. The only thing I don't remember is Alice. I don't remember anything about Alice. But maybe that was how it was meant to be. I don't know. We had moved into a flat in a completely new area when I was around 13. Nothing we experienced was immediately, oh my god, it's a fucking ghost. But they were just little odd encounters that got us questioning how exactly it happened. The odd experiences started on the day after the move, and it was just me and my mother. We were sitting down watching TV, and my mother stood up to go to the toilet as I remained sitting down. After about a minute of her being in the bathroom, I heard her shout, why have you just walked into your room? But I hadn't. I was still sitting on the sofa, watching TV. I hadn't moved at all. When she came back, she told me that she heard footsteps walking down the corridor and into my bedroom on the right. This could be explained logically, though, as our downstairs neighbours were quite loud, and we could hear them talking and banging around at some points, so it wouldn't be a surprise if we heard their loud footsteps too, but I just thought I'd mention it anyways. The second encounter was when I was cooking if I remember correctly. This was a couple months after we moved in, and I was helping my mother make dinner. I was in charge of making the cheese sauce. I'm just there whisking away until I turn around for a few seconds to grab my drink and check my phone. As I was turned around, the whisk somehow managed to flip itself out of the saucepan and onto the floor, which confused both myself and my mother. Now, me and my mother never saw it happen, but we were both confused at how it managed to do that. I'm sure I didn't knock it with my hand or arm, because surely it would have come with me, and I didn't leave it on top of the saucepan. I left it leaning towards the side of it, inside of the saucepan. It was almost as if something picked it up and just dropped it on the floor. Could this be logically explained? Before I move on to my main odd encounter, I thought I'd mention two little things that also used to happen. Whenever I was alone, I'd always see something out of the corner of my eye, as if something was standing behind me or watching me and disappeared as soon as I turned around. Again, it could just be a shadow of myself or something else around me, or just where I was standing, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. Things would also go missing in that flat and randomly turn up in the most random of places, or in the spot where we originally left them. For example, We'd lose cutlery or pieces of clothing, can't find it anywhere, we give up, and a week or so later, it's back. Is this a normal thing that happens? Were we just too blind to see the thing right in front of us, or was Casper messing around with our things? This is something that only happened to me. It only happened once, but it's something that still keeps me up at night. I was around 14 when this happened, and it was around 1am or 2am and I was getting ready to go to sleep. Since my sleep schedule was totally fucked back then, still is a little bit now, and I turned off my TV and turned around to face the wall. After about a minute of me turning around, it felt as though something was touching and moving my hair around, but I just assumed it was because I turned around too quickly. I then began to feel really cold, almost as if I went cold-blooded for about 20 seconds. Then everything went back to normal again, I heard a little bit of movement in my room, then all of a sudden, I heard something whisper breathing into my ear. Almost like an exhale, and I immediately shot up, seeing nothing but the darkness. I thought I heard it again, so I immediately turned my TV back on and didn't go to sleep until about 5 in the morning. The hair touching and me feeling cold 
could all be explained logically, but I find it hard to find a logical explanation for the breathing I supposedly heard. It couldn't have been the wind, since my window and vent weren't open. It wasn't my mother or her boyfriend, since both our bedroom doors were shut, so... Was I just overtired and hearing things? I don't know, but I still get the chills and am terrified to go to sleep almost every night now, thinking I'll hear it again. I grew up in North County, San Diego. I don't live there anymore, but this story pertains to the road leading through Lake Hodges, a reservoir and hiking spot in Escondido, California. It's a gorgeous but spooky area. The lake is surrounded by sleepy canyons filled with yapping coyotes and old farmhouses spread out among big lots. There are barely any street light on the residential streets cradling the lake. The lake itself has some dark history only locals might know. A high school girl got raped and murdered while jogging along the main trail when I was around the same age. My best friend's sister and her friend found voodoo dolls and knives stuck to some oak trees along the trail once. Creepy shit. San Diego looks nothing like the deep south, but Lake Hodges has a similar complex about it. It feels like something unspeakable has happened there. When I was in high school, around 2009 to 2011, my friends and I would drive around and smoke cigarettes. We listened to new music and had existential adolescent conversations. Often, we would drive around at night. I believe the first time this happened was in late winter of 2010. We were driving down the windy road, past the point separating the dam from the rest of the lake. As we were about to turn a corner, we saw this figure of a tall man standing on the side of the road. He had a slum up, looking to hitchhike. His hair was wet and black, and the best adjective I can conjure up for him is slimy. He was wearing his wet trench coat and his face was wan. When our headlights met his eyes, they looked vacant, yet melancholy, staring off into space like a zombie. But still, there was something soulful about them. I can't explain it, and it's been over a decade, so I've had plenty of time to reflect on how strange sorrow I witnessed in him. Anyway, he vaguely resembled a drowned pirate, and we were all terrified. A few months later, same thing. We saw the same figure hitchhiking a bit further down the road. This time, we were even more mortified. A hitchhiker in the same place, in the same clothes, twice. A year or so later, I had returned from college for spring break and was catching up with my same friend, barreling down the road. Somehow, the topic of the hitchhiker came up. My friend told me that she had just seen him again recently at a different spot down the same road at night. We commented on how we knew he was a ghost, or just not human. My main questions are still, why would a hitchhiker always be looking for a ride along the same road? Always at night, and seemingly only in the early part of the year. And how the hell is it so obvious he's dead? I lived in a house that was built very close to an old one-room schoolhouse that was boarded up due to the headmaster shooting all of the students and his wife, burying them on the school's property and hanging himself in the attic. Keep in mind, while reading this, I have always had security cameras surrounding my house and pointing toward the street. One night, my friend and I had gotten home from a camping trip. We were 16 at the time. We had been sitting on the couch at around 1am as we were waiting for some episode of some TV show or something. We had the Apple TV on, and anyone familiar with Apple products knows how easy it is to mirror your device onto another one. I had a monitor in my living room with all of my security cameras on a constant stream. They recorded 24-7, but stored motion with high sensitivity. Next to the monitor was my TV. The TV glitched over to another image, not the mirroring screen and it was an image directly into the bay window behind us. You could see my CCTV monitor, as well as the TV it was playing on us on the couch. The cameras picked up no motion, and nobody outside they were pointed where they were supposed to be. 
It stayed on for about 10 seconds before the power went out. We went down to the basement to check the breakers and were trying to decide if calling the cops was worth it. Even though the cameras didn't pick up anything, the breakers were all on. When we came back upstairs, the power came back. All of the cabinets in the kitchen were open, as well as the fridge and the doors on my entertainment center. When we decided not to call the cops, it wasn't someone hacking into the TV and all the cameras, as all of the windows were still locked. Both entryways were dead bolted shut. From then on, I had to come home to cabinets open, lights on that had been left off, stuff moved around. We'd hear footsteps through the house, as well as kids laughing. My grandpa, nan and father all passed away inside the house, so there's history here. The first time I experienced something in this house was quite a few years ago. I was with my friends and we were playing a prank on another friend who was sleeping at the time. We were going to barge into the room he was sleeping in and wave sparklers in his face and make a lot of noise to wake him up. I decided to film this and share it with my other friends. When I look back at my footage the next day, while we were preparing to barge into the room, we were trying to be quiet not to wake him. There was a very clear voice in the video that didn't belong to anyone there. It was a very thick American accent and said, get out of my way. None of us heard it at that moment, only in the video. Another time I experienced something in the house was when I was having an argument with my girlfriend and mid-sentence, all the taps in the house turned on at the same time. Now this could be due to faulty plumbing, but it scared the crap out of both of us enough to stop arguing. Not too sure if this is paranormal or not. I've been touched by something on my neck while washing dishes. I was home alone and washing dishes late at night and felt a cold, almost wet touch stroke the back of my neck. It made the hairs on my neck stand up and sent tingles down my arms. But now we get to the interesting stuff. So because the house is very old, we've had it renovated and now the activity has multiplied. Just last night, I had someone walking down my hallway and stopping outside my bedroom. No one was home, just me. Doors are open when I know I've shut them and doors are closed when I know I've left them open. But the weirdest one has only started in the last few nights. When I'm in bed at night, I hear someone walking on my roof. Not an animal, like human steps. I rushed outside with a torch to check, thinking there was something or someone actually on my roof, but nothing. It has happened every night at around midnight without fail. Just someone on my roof. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff over the years, but this house is definitely haunted, but I don't feel unsafe. It feels as if my family is making it known that they're still here with me. I just watched Juon slash The Grudge tonight for the first time. Honestly, a great movie. The 80s to early 2000s always feel the most suitable times to me for horror films because of the low budget animations and shitty quality cameras. Especially films made in Japan, as the people there really know how to set the fucked up mood. Anyways, the movie was probably on the scale of 7 to 8.5 for me, on the creep factor. It wasn't the worst horror experience I had, but it's probably been numbed down from all the shit I've put myself through in the past. To get a little spooked as the feeling is pretty addicting. After I finished watching it and turned off the TV, I snuck outside through the window for a quick smoke break before bed. Keep in mind that it's 2.30 in the morning. The window I have to go through is above the fridge in the kitchen and leads outside, not far from the ground. There's a ledge that's reachable from the window and the ground, so I used that as the median to get myself up and down every time. When I finally got down, I suddenly felt a really fucked up feeling, as if something or someone was out there watching me. I immediately started hearing creaking noises from my neighbour's yard to the left of me, but they started far away and started to get closer. I brushed it off and assumed it was the wind and lit my cigarette. Then, after the noises stopped, I started hearing the swings creak in the neighbour's yard to the other side of me on the right. When I finally built up the courage, 
I decided to peek over the fence and could have sworn I saw a figure on the swing. Didn't know for sure, so I kept my cool and kind of huddled where nobody could see me. Finally, that noise stopped, and once again I stood back up and I swear to fuck, I saw a lady in the back window of the house behind mine, to the right. She was staring right at me. I saw her whole body, but it looked like her face was 100% blank. This was not a hallucination, because after seeing it, I immediately climbed back through my window. It took me like five minutes just scrambling to get inside, and looked out my window just to see her standing still, in the same position, staring at me just as she did before. My mind was racing. I didn't know what to think. Was this a full-blown spirit? Some creepy mannequin that some weirdo decided to leave there? Or was it just our neighbour who saw me sneak inside, not being able to make out my face, thinking I was some intruder? All of these thoughts wanted to scare the fuck out of me, so I ran upstairs to my room, turned on my Mac and told my friend everything. He was sleeping, so I went back down and checked the window again. She was still there. Weird thing is, as much as she could be a mannequin or something that could be made out to look like a woman, an obvious head was pointed straight in my direction. It gave me eerie ass vibes and I cannot sleep one bit. I'm going back down to check it again through the window and to brush my teeth. When I was 18, I took an evening job at Taco Bell. Well, let me back up slightly. I live in Ogden, Utah. The Taco Bell I had encountered at was the one on Harrison Boulevard. There's only one on that 10 mile long street, so there's no mistaking which one I'm talking about. When I turned 18, the year was 1996, when Taco Bell was still serving the chili cheese burrito. It was right around then that the gordita was introduced. So. I would work the closing shift. I was so excited because I loved their food. I learned fast. The guys whose team I just joined were quick to let me know that the store was haunted. I grew up Jehovah's Witness, so the whole ghosts and spirits were instantly dismissed as bullshit and some harmless hazing. They insisted though that it was the truth and would learn soon enough. They weren't wrong. Sleeves of cups and lids would fall off shelving. If you know fast food, you know that mostly packaging and cups are often kept in the boxes they're shipped in. So no rolling off the shelf. There's no way they'd end up on the ground unless they were intentionally tossed to the ground. At one point, I wanted to challenge the theory. So I meticulously stacked all the stuff, making sure it was sturdy and not likely to end up on the floor. That shit still ended up on the floor, no matter how I positioned it. Then there were the bathrooms. The hand dryers were flipping on and off randomly, all nights until about 6, then it would quiet down. Never when working a random lunch shift, never during the day. Yet, once the doors were locked, my already dying Jehovah's Witness sensibilities were basically put on life support after my time there. We were a walk-up friendly establishment. If you don't know what a walk-up is, well, it's what you would do if you had no car but we're really saving a Santa Fe Chalupa. Then it took you forever to walk there. So by the time you arrived, Taco Bell was closed. What do you do? You walk up to the only place you can place an order. The only available portal to all that Taco Bell greatness. The drive through Which is where the last bit takes place. I was sweeping the floor behind the counter. I look up and it's a really old dude. Guessing he looked about a hundred. Frail is a word that I would say about him. I glanced away to prop the broom, begin walking over. Only as I got within six steps of the window do I glance up to see no one standing there. I walk over and I'm searching around for the guy. He was gone though. 24 years later, I still don't see how this helpless looking man could have possibly sprinted around and out of sight. And the amount of time it took me to drop the broom and walk over a few steps. If you go work there, you've been warned. At the time I was 17, 
And in my town, he had an abandoned horse racing track. Now for context, this building is tucked back from the road and is at the point of falling apart. Like, cannot go upstairs falling apart. Me and my dumb friends, of course, are enticed by this place. So one night, we decide to go. After walking to the track from the main road, your body is just filled with an eerie sense. We decided to enter through the main entrance this time, instead of the back entrance. Upon walking in the shattered glass doors, there were also about five or six of us going this time, me entering last. The glass continued to crunch behind me and my friend Colin. Confirmed to me, he had heard it too. So we first head to the basements. Down here, not much happens, besides some odd bangs and clanks, which could be anything. But the real fear set in when we went back to the main floor. Now this floor is huge and open, with windows on all sides. So we could not use lights since we were trespassing, and did not want anyone to call the cops after seeing the lights. We enter the middle of the floor and stand in the darkness, the only light coming from the moon through the windows. Which is then when we started hearing steps above us. Of course in my head I'm saying fuck this, but we decided to wait a little longer. This is when shit got scary. We started hearing more and more noises. To one side we could see a shadow figure walking briskly across, only to be outlined by the moonlight. And then to the other side, the same damn thing. But they didn't look like normal people. They didn't move the same way is the only way I can explain it. At this point, it seems like these figures are surrounding us. My fight or flight says get the fuck out. And so that's what I told my friends to. And we booked it out of there and did not stop running until we're back at the car. So now back home, I'll keep this brief since it's not the paranormal parts. I look up possible deaths at this place. Turns out two girls were murdered on the train tracks behind the building and some people died working there. This is probably about a month later, only three of us this time. Colin again and I'll say Jay. We do the typical walking around and dumb provoking, the typical noises of bangs and clanks. So we decided it was too boring and it was time to leave. And that's when he says he wants to wait a second alone while we walk back to the car. Not even a minute later, he's sprinting past me and Jay never gets scared. So Colin and I decided, oh fuck, let's run. We get back to the car where Jay tells us he was talking up loud, asking if anyone was there, when he heard a voice behind me. Instinctively, he turned around and that's when something pushed him from the way he was just facing. Since that incident, I never returned, partly because I turned 18 and did not need to ruin my future being caught. Partly because I felt like something evil was there. I was walking the dog at a local park. It has quite a bit of development around it, like some car dealerships, a few plazas across the street, and so on. It's also located a few miles from the local jail. I've taken the dog there quite a bit over the years, sometimes on leash, sometimes off. Encountered some moose at nights, but never anything beyond that. As I'm following the path back to the main park, I'm on a divided section that's surrounded by fencing on both sides. The car dealership on one, and their storage lot on the other. The stretch is pretty much until there's a clearing half a mile ahead, which is really an empty lot that is fairly large. The fencing on both sides is fairly new, but there is a cutaway section on the south side, as you approach the park. We're walking west, passing all the dealerships. Coming to the clearing where the fencing ends and the big lot opens up and I see a Native American fellow walking towards me. He was wearing all black. I think he also had a hat on, fairly skinny with long hair. He kind of had a smile or smirk on his face, but overall didn't give me any type of vibe or feeling. I was actually more concerned that the dog would misbehave since he was still young and prone to be overly friendly with strangers. My dog didn't even react, and we passed each other. At that point, I guess I felt a bit sketchy, and just wanted to look back to get a quick glance. I looked back, and I didn't see him. Mind you, it's not even 20 feet from where we had just crossed. I was a bit puzzled, 
since I felt I should have seen him as soon as I looked back. Naturally, this got me curious, so I went back to venture and see if he's crossing this big open lot. But I don't see anyone. I think, okay, maybe he's hopped the fence and is in the car lot. But again, I didn't see anything, and I definitely didn't hear any fence rattling. At this point, I figure I'm just bugging out, and he must have slipped out somewhere that I just didn't check. I head back past the open lot and pretty much back to the park. I look back again and I see a coyote looking right at me. The dog hadn't reacted this entire time and he's extremely reactive. So I just figured let's get out of here and sprint a few feet more and again look back. The coyote hasn't moved and it's still staring. At this point, a lady on a bike is approaching the coyote way and I figure this is a good time to end the walk and depart. So I'm not a drinker anymore. Was as a teen, but not now so much. I just get bored of it. Never finish more than one drink before it's like, ah, I don't have to. So I decided to have my one drink as my girlfriend went to bed. As we have LEDs on all night until I sleep, because I operate during the night, watching her sugars if she's without a CGM, type 1 diabetic, and I have terrible eyesight, so we don't want me getting hurt. I also have other medical issues that could really get fucked if I'm to misstep or something. She deals with it and is a good sport. So as I was laying in bed, I got the insane urge to get out of bed and watch her sleep from the foot of it. I did, for like five minutes. And then I looked beside me, and I saw this just dark but very clearly there in the blue light figure, just standing shoulder to shoulder with me. I didn't feel threatened, but I felt more calm. Then all of a sudden, I felt fear and hopped into bed and woke up my girl. The shadow was gone. Then a few days passed with no activity, and our cat comes into our room. Her name is Neo, and she's this super tame, super calm, lovely cat. Well, after a short while, and she puffs her tail out, gets her hackles up, and starts hiding behind me and my girlfriend. It starts bugging us, because we're just being affectionate to her, so I go to kick her out. As I near the door, she starts getting upset. So my girlfriend makes an offhand joke about the movie Lights Out. Like, oh, there's going to be someone behind that door. Like in the movie. And I shit you not, when I opened that door, there was indeed a shadowy figure standing there. The same one, I believe, that I encountered before. I was very obviously shitting some bricks, but I tried to play it down for my girlfriend. She gets very scared anytime something starts happening. So the cat loses its mind and we just decide to stay in the room for the rest of the night. We had treatments for her if she went low, so we were set. She went to the bathroom later in the evening though and she ran back into me because she heard someone whispering her name to her through the crack under the door. There have been other minor things. Like electronics glitching out and making almost cartoonist glitch noises. Sometimes with voices ringing through the static and bugging. I really hope someday we can catch this stuff on film. Maybe while making a YouTube video or when I'm live on Twitch. If so, I'll put it up with any updates I do further. Once again, I respect your opinion if you don't believe me. And I thank you guys for not being rude about it. So recently, we've been hearing knocking on the door to our apartment. A couple small knocks, dogs go crazy, we all get goosebumps, all is quiet for a while. The knocks don't happen every night, and when they do, the time is very inconsistent, and often infrequent. I live with my mother, stepfather, three dogs and a cat in the apartment, which is the basement of my grandmother's house. Before it was finished many years ago, as far back as the 80s and 90s, this baby basement was my mother's room and leading up to her moving at age 21 she would hear knocking on the door which freaked her out but she blamed it on recurring dreams or someone in the house messing with her recently my mother heard it again and it mildly alerted one of the dogs i feel it's safe to note that we are moving out in a few months and we've just gone into the final stage of securing a house 
something consistent with when my mom heard the knocking at a younger age. Later in the same night, after my stepdad woke up for an unrelated reason, they both heard it, and this time, two of the three dogs started barking, and the other one woke up. The first knock, according to them, was around 10.30, and the second knock was around 3 o'clock. I thought they were trying to mess with me, until today the dogs began to bark around 2pm, and later, at around 6.30, I actually heard the knock myself before they were alerted once again. Yesterday, I brought up the old dog camera we don't use anymore, since my mother is working from home due to COVID-19, and we set it up out there. Upon checking today, for some reason it was not recording during the first knock, probably our own fault, and when we checked on the second knock, there was nothing at either side of the door. August 2019, it was about 1am in the morning. I had just put my phone down and decided it was time to go to sleep. I was staring straight into the corner of my room for a couple of minutes when I saw a black figure, head first, slowly come down from the ceiling. I could only see up to its shoulders before I screamed my lungs out and thrashed around my bed trying to find my phone to shine the flashlight at it, but as soon as I did it, it was gone. My throat hurt so bad from my scream, but my brother didn't hear me. Oddly enough, my four-year-old dog didn't react to the figure. I'm not sure if she saw or was just tired and didn't sense it. But it's safe to say I didn't get any sleep that night. I stayed up talking to a friend on the phone until about 4.30am, then decided to bring my oldest dog, Toby, into my room for comfort. Two weeks later, my big boy Toby passed away. October of 2019, I had just gotten ready to go to a Halloween party and was taking selfies in my bedroom mirror, which is located directly under where I saw the black figure two months prior. A few weeks later, I was looking through those selfies when I noticed one of them had a strange smudge looking figure in it. In that photo, my four year old dog is looking directly at the figure. For a second, I thought my mirror was possibly dirty but the figure only appeared in one photo. I showed it to friends and they thought it looked like a face or a dog. I didn't know how to feel about it, whether to think it was my Toby who had just passed or something else. Anyways, last night around 7 p.m. I decided to wash my bed sheets, including my mattress cover. The mattress cover is the type you have to zip onto your mattress. It's sort of easy to unzip and remove, but incredibly hard to put back onto your mattress and zip it up, especially if you're doing it on your own like I was. During the whole process of washing the sheets and cover and placing them in the dryer, my cat Nova wandered into my room and sat down. Thanks to my poor planning skills, I finished my laundry at about 10.15pm and was now attempting to zip the cover back onto my mattress. In doing so, I had to lift the mattress and place it on my knee to hold it up. While using the bed slats to support my foot, I was wearing slippers. I was halfway done with the zipping when I heard my cat's bell ring and immediately after, I felt something gently rub against the bottom of my slipper with enough strength to lift my foot up. It felt almost like when a cat rubs its body against your leg. I yelled Nova, thinking my cat had gotten under my bed, which she's never done before. I instantly lifted the mattress from my knee and looked underneath it to get her out, but nothing was there. I then looked behind me and noticed Nova hadn't moved from her original spot. She was still facing the same direction away from me, indicating she hadn't moved at all. I know what you're thinking. Maybe she got out before I looked. But the thing is, Nova is mentally delayed. She's incredibly so with everything she does and needs help with the simplest activities. And normally... Once she finds a spot to sit, she doesn't move for hours. I honestly just began laughing while still holding the bed up, also confused. That really just happened? Kept running across my mind. I'm honestly not sure what to think of everything that's happened so far. I haven't told my parents anything. I'm not sure if they've experienced anything in the house, or if it's just me and my room. <laughs> 